Everyone has that one deck that made them fall in love with Yu-Gi-Oh. Maybe you liked the game before, but then that one deck was released that just spoke to you and changed your passion for the game forever. After watching this video, I'd like everyone to comment below what your favorite deck is and why. Please keep it nice. I'm sure I'll be getting a bunch of hate as it is without people even making it this far. Like most people that played this game, I have a long history with Yu-Gi-Oh. Whether it be watching the anime or reading the manga as a kid, or opening packs and building a million decks that I still own today. Everything changed when I saw Snowl for the first time. I love Winter, and I love Owls. And with Adore in the art style, that's all that it took for me to get into Flu. The longer I played the deck, the more I fell in love with the archetype. But why do I love Flu? Is it because I don't have any friends? No, though they hate me for playing it. Is it because I have a smooth brain? Well, probably. Is it because I like the Featherstorm people? I've broken this topic down into three bite-sized sections. Number one, story and art style. For those of you that don't know already, I'll make this brief. The Philandry's archetype tells a story that parallels the real birds they're based on, Arctic Terns. Arctic Terns are these small birds that can be found anywhere from the North Pole to the South Pole. They're literally known for flying around the world every year and not staying in one place for very long. And it's the life of these birds that is being shown throughout the various artworks of the flu cards. Starting in the Arctic with Snow, they travel to places like the UK, America, Africa, and the rainforest until they finally make their way to Antarctica to meet Enpen. You can see these stops they plan to make on the way in the field spell, and it's details like that that I love. Also, Arctic terns are even known for sleeping while they're flying, which is referenced in Dreaming Town. It's a simple story, but a story that I love nonetheless. On another note, the art style is what literally caught my eye from the very beginning. In my eyes, it literally looks like a picture from a children's storybook, which might be a knock at some of the flu players' IQ, but it even makes more sense when the cards are literally telling a story. Plus, I just think they're neat. Number two, playstyle. Something else I love about flu, and a lot of my other favorite decks, is that their playstyle matches with the theme of the deck. Plunder Patrol is an example. Equip the various monsters to whichever ship you cheat out of the extra deck. It's like the captains are literally manning the ship. The Arctic Terns that Floanderers are based off of literally travel the world. And like the story, the deck works around a resource loop that are consistently moving around the board. Essentially treating your side of the board like a globe. The Floanderers have a very unique type of removal in the form of the continuous spell, Floanderers and the Unexplored Winds. Dealing with annoying boss monsters and back row to help make your boss monsters are insane. Also, I like the chain blocking the deck is known for is in theme for the birds getting help and making new friends throughout their trip. Hell, the whole point of the deck is to get to Empen, and that's telling the story in itself. Also, I like the fact that you're not special summoning anything, which really plays around a lot of the monster interactions you might find throughout the game today. Plus, being able to counter links with Empen is pretty nice. The Wanderies as a deck is very fragile. So even though the stereotype is, bird brain, normal summon Robina, search Eaglin, just throwing a Robina on the field loses to every hand trap in the game and ends your turn immediately. The deck forces you to play on the defensive and sequence your effects in ways that protects you from the heavy hand trap format we're currently in today. It's learning to play like this that has made me into a much better duelist today. Speaking of skill expression, number three, competitive history. Yes, yes, I know, the birds are cringe, Everyone likes a dunk on flu, like many other decks people hate. That is, until someone in the community likes makes it popular. But that's a different discussion for a different day. As much as people hate the birds, when the format needs them the most, they're here to wreck house. I can think of several formats in recent history that flu has completely counted the best deck in the room. Back in tier 0 with Shizu tier format, I, it got to the point where you either played a mirror match that went to chain 69, or played a shifter deck. Being the fact that Cash Tier wasn't released yet, Flu is your best choice. Unchained was once considered the best deck in the room by far. Being able to stop your opponent from special summoning twice a turn, and link climbing with anything that was special summon after. Well, guess what Flu doesn't do? Special summon. It's interactions like this that I find really interesting, of course, to the dismay of everyone else in the room around me. Not to mention, Shifter kind of ruins the dog's day. Fast forwarding to today and the Snake Eye, we're in pretty much what everyone and their mother is calling a tier 0 format. Fire King Snake Eye and Pure Snake Eye have been taking up over 80% of the top cut 
in pretty much every event since the release of Phantom Nightmare. Yes, there are other decks that can be played, but if you're not playing into Tier 0, you're playing around Tier 0. Enter again, our Lord and Savior at M-Pen. There are other shifter decks that can be played, but to me it seems the flu is the most consistent, which is funny because flu could be pretty bricky. Again, it's Cars and Flu's arsenal that hits the opponent's graveyard with cards like Shifter, DD Crow, and Street, playing around targeting instruction removal with the amazing Continuous spell, and the normal summon lock that Flu has that plays around new threats like Promethean Princess that has thrusted it into competitive viability to this day, even after over three years of release. I'm not sure if that was even proper sentence structure, but I've written this part over five times now, and I think you get the point. I'm sure I could bring up even more reasons why I love this deck, but if you've made it this far into the video, I want to sincerely thank each and every one of you. Now it's your turn. What is your favorite deck and why? Let me know in the comments below. Hopefully this has shown at least one person that not all flu players want to see the world burn. Well anyways, with that, I'll see you guys next time. See ya.